All right, what's going on YouTube? This is Boxer Wave. So I wanted to do a video on Canelo Alvarez fighting Rocky Fielding this weekend. Okay, this is going to be Canelo's first fight, fighting on his own. Um, I think this is a strictly business fight. I think they're trying to pull in some new subscribers. Canelo's new, and they're just trying to get the subscribers. And they're just, it's a December fight for Canelo. We know Canelo usually fights in September and May and the uh, Mexican holidays. This fight is just like a bonus fight for him. Okay, um, Rocky Fielding, he's a pretty good fighter. When I rate him, um, as far as skill set is concerned, when I rate him compared to the other Canelo opponents over the years, I rate him somewhere in the middle. Okay, I think he's above an Angulo, uh, a James Kirkland, you know, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, uh, and a few others. You know, I think he's. In the middle, I think he's below the Laras, obviously the Gennady Golovkins, the Amir Khans. These are, I mean, as far as skill set is concerned, I think he's somewhere in the middle now. As far as his size is concerned, he is going to be Canelo's biggest opponent. I mean, he's, he's a very big guy even at 168. Okay, he's a big guy at 168. Rocky Film is a big fighter, right? And he has skills. He's not a bad fighter. I actually think that this fight is going to be an entertaining one. And this is why. Rocky Fielding, I've seen him fight against Zoiga, his last fight, and I've seen him fight against Callum Smith, which was the first fight I've ever seen him in, in, in both of them. I've never seen Callum Smith before that fight. That was the first time uh, me watching Callum Smith, and that's because it was such a big deal when it happened. It was like all over, over my YouTube feed when that fight you know, came about or whatever. So I remember that fight well. Um, and that was the first time I seen the both of them. Callie, Callum Smith is huge at 168. Like he's a, a decent sized light heavyweight, you know, um, and Callum Smith blew right through him. But things that I saw in the Zoiga fight, I did watch the whole entire so Zoiga fight, like maybe about a week ago. And Rocky is a good, solid, well-rounded fighter. Okay. I think, uh, is he at the absolute elite level? Absolutely not. No, he holds a title. But I wouldn't really consider him elite. I think 168 is kind of a weaker division right now. I think the talent at 160 is much better. Um, not saying that he's a bad fighter. He can fight well on his back foot. Uh, he can fight pretty well on the inside. He got a decent power. Um, got good counter puncher ability. And he, he throws some good combinations. All right, So he's not a bad fighter at all. Uh, it's just that Canelo has been fighting guys much better than this throughout his career at this point. Whether you thought he won, lost, or whatever, he's performed against higher level competition. Okay, so fights like this, outside of the size, outside of the size, not much of a bother for Canelo. He's just not in his league. You know, I think if they were the same size, you know, if he fought Rocky down at 154 or at 160, Canelo would probably destroy him. But Rocky does have a huge size advantage. He has a, a, a length, a reach advantage, which is not going to really matter because I see the way a fight, I think this is going to be a good fight. All right. I think people are going to like the fight. Like there's going to be some good rounds in there. I think the fight is going to start off going into Canelo's favor because Rocky is going to try to box with Canelo. He's not going to come in trying to be overly aggressive. Okay. Uh, I think he's going to come out, try to be a little distant in the fight and rangy in the fight. And he's going to get countered and he's going to get outpointed early on. Then I see Rocky being a little bit more aggressive, using his size, you know, back and trying to push Canelo, the smaller Canelo to the ropes and try to go to his body and try to be more aggressive. OK, I don't think it's going to take long for him to get to that point. But I think after the first round, maybe even the second round, really early in the fight, Rocky is going to be more aggressive. He's going to have to be. OK, um, I think that's when the fight is actually going to look really, really good. All right. Um, the thing is with Canelo, I know he's smaller. He's not a small dude. He's not a small dude. You saw him there with Triple G. He didn't look small against Triple G. OK. Um, he's been in there with guys with punches really hard. He's been in there with guys that were 
much lengthier and harder to hit like Lara, uh, Trout. Uh, he's been in there with the best. And I think Rocky, even though he's a bigger guy, I think when we actually seen him in the ring together, it's not going to look that much different. Obviously, Rocky's going to be taller. But as far as actual mass, it's not going to look that different when they're actually in the ring together. You know, Rock Cano is always much bigger on a fight night. And being that he can fight at 168, he doesn't even have to drain himself down to a 154. Like when he fought Cotto, looks much bigger than Cotto in that fight. Much bigger. He's not going to have to drain himself down to 160. I think he's going to look very close to Rocky as far as mass, if not the same size at least, okay? The height difference, yes, that's going to be there. But Canelo is a good boxer. He's fought some really, really high-level boxers like Alara, Trout, um, Amir Khan, Gennady Golovkin. I think he's going to be just fine. I don't know if he's going to stop Rocky. You know, if he does stop him, I expect it to be later in the fight. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think Canelo... I, I, I give Rocky a little bit more respect because... Even though he got stopped by Callum Smith, I mean, that was Callum Smith. We're talking about an even bigger guy that's way more athletic, that punches hard, and that's a very good boxer, very fast hands. Can Callum Smith is on a different level, okay? Canelo wouldn't fight that guy. You know, I'm being realistic here. I think Rocky's going to do well, and I think this makes for a good fight. I think it's going to be a good fight until it either gets stopped or until later in the rounds. I think later, as the fight goes on, Canelo is going to dominate him. And, you know, it's going to either go to the judges or whatever. You know, I'm not really sure if he's going to stop Rocky. But I think Canelo is definitely going to win on points, all right, unanimously, all right? Now, uh, mainly I wanted to do this video because, I, you know, everybody just basically is predicting Canelo to win this fight. You know, uh, who does Canelo fight next? I did a poll the other day on YouTube. I'm sure a lot of you guys did it. Uh, about just under, we got 929 votes here. And out of the 929 votes, I asked, which middleweight should Canelo fight in May? Who is he going to fight in May? All right. Not talking about, we're not talking about, uh, mandatories or anything just who do you think because when it comes to that stuff canelo can pretty much do whatever he wants to do all right <laughs> so he chooses who he wants to fight so with that being said who do you think and the people that i put i put billy joe saunders i had uh golovkin here for a third fight you, you never know you had jamal charlo here daniel jacobs and demetrius andre now the most voted fighter that I have here is Jamal Charlo at 42%. So 42% out of those five fighters, 42% voters picked Jamal Charlo, which was very interesting. I didn't think that he would be in the lead out of everyone here. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders was his second at 25%. Daniel Jacobs was at third at 17%. Golovkin was fourth at 11%. And Demetrius Andre was at the bottom at 5%. All right. Um, I didn't really know what to expect. All right. But I was surprised to see so many people wanted to see the Jamal Charlo fight. All right. I didn't know. You know, I mean, I know I want to see it. Uh, but there's different ways about I, I, I feel. Yeah, I have a few opinions about these opponents. First of all, when it comes to Billy Joe Saunders, he's all the way at the back at this point. I think he ruined a good fight with Demetrius Andre by filling that drug test and he's in last place doesn't matter how good I think he is at one point on this channel I said that he was the second best middleweight in the world after Golovkin you know and I said this years ago uh, but right now he's in last place I don't think he's deserving of the fight right now because uh, he just he's coming off of a drug test uh, I mean failing a drug test and stylistically, he would be difficult for Canelo, in my opinion. I think a lot of people agree to that. I think a lot of people think that Saunders would be difficult. Um, the thing with these fighters here, though, I'm not sold on anyone. I'm not completely sold at, on one fighter on this list here. 
Um, and what I mean by that, and I, I think a lot of these guys are very good. I'm a big fan of a lot of these fighters. Fighters, They're very, very good. The problem is with these middleweights, a lot of them haven't really fought each other. David Lemieux fought a lot of them, all right? And I, I, I didn't include, include him on this list. I could have included him. But I think for the May fight, Canelo is probably going to go for something a little bigger. I don't know. Uh, but Lemieux was always there, too. I could have included him. He's def definitely a possible opponent. But besides Lemieux, Lemieux, Lemieux fought a lot of these guys. He's fought a lot of these guys. And a lot of guys were willing to fight him because he can be outboxed. You know? But he's dangerous at the same time. But he can be, we've seen it several times. Um, but with these fighters here, you got, you know, Saunders who has done a lot at the weight, all right? He beat Eubank, he beat Andy Lee, you know, he beat Willie Monroe, he's beat Lemieux, he's beating some good fighters. So he definitely is deserving of a fight, but him failing the test puts him out of the category. He's not going to, I don't believe Team Canelo is going to allow, you know, or fight him on his first one fight back. After failing a drug test. You know, I believe that Billy Joe needs a couple fights. Whenever you fail a test, and I know Canelo failed a test last year, but Canelo's, once again, he's a cash cow of the sport. He can do whatever he wants. I'm not saying that's fair, but that's just the way it is. Billy Joe, I don't think he's he's going to be one of the fighters. Gennady Golovkin, I'm surprised to see that he was in fourth because... A lot of people felt, more people felt that he won the fight against Canelo. All right. Um, I think people are just tired and they don't want to see a third fight. They want to see Canelo move on and they want to see Golovkin move on and fight someone else. There's a lot of other people. This division is flooded, especially because a couple guys moved up from 154. The division is flooded, you know, so people are tired of the Golovkin thing. You know, I don't think we're going to see a third fight. Is it possible? Yes, but I just don't believe we're going to see one, all right? Um, Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo. This is probably the fight I want to see the most. I want to see this fight the most. Uh, the problem with this is, you know, the whole Al Heyman thing and the zone and Eddie Hearn. I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, Jamal is definitely a mandatory. He's in the... He's a mandatory. He is the mandatory for the WBC. He held the WBC at 154. So he definitely deserves a shot as far as his ranking. Do I think he's done more than some of these other fighters here? No. You know, I, do, I, think, I think Saunders have done more. I think uh, Daniel Jacobs have done more, especially at 160. And obviously Golovkin has done more as well. It's just... Jamal is in position to get his shot. I would love to see that fight because I just think that's a great matchup. I think think I think that is going to be a very very intriguing fight because I I, I want to see who's going to be the aggressive in that fight. There's a lot of similarities between the two of them. I think um, they both have great jabs. They both have great right hands. They're both good counter punchers. Um, they're both fast. They go have good f footwork very similar styles in my opinion i just want to see who's better um so i personally want to see that fight i would like to see that fight are we gonna get it i, I really don't know you know but we'll see daniel jacobs is another fight that i think that i really want to see i would love to see the damien jacobs site i think Daniel jacobs is probably the most deserving right now out of these five he's done the most at 160 he beat an undefeated Peter Quillen, knocked him out in one round. He beat an undefeated uh, Devrinchenko, okay? Um, he's done, I don't need to go down a list on what he's done at 160. He gave Golovkin one of his toughest fights. Uh, and he's just been a middleweight all his career, you know? He's still in his prime. Um, he brings different fundamentals that uh, to Canelo that... Jamal Charlo doesn't break. I mean, he's he could fight righty or lefty. Um, he's a big guy himself. He has power. He's very dangerous with power. Um, he's another fighter. You know, I, I mean, he's another fighter. I mean, if I had to nitpick, 
sometimes I don't think Daniel Jacobs brings all of the most exciting fights at times. Um, some of his fights are very, very good. Some of his fights are really boring. There's no really in between with him. There are some fights that, you know, maybe it's because he fights on a level of his opponents. You know, I didn't expect him to do that well against Quillen. I didn't expect him to do that well against Triple G. All right. So it's like the fights that I do sleep on them at times. Um, I was very really nervous about the Devin Chinko fight. Um, but it seems like when he steps up, he does better than expected. You know, and if he fights Canelo, I expect a very good Daniel Jacobs. All right. Um, and when it comes to uh, Demetrius Andre, he's last on his list. I think him, I personally think as far as who's going to make the best fight, I think Andre probably makes the best matchup because the way he fights. Demetrius Andre is pretty aggressive. He can fight a rangy fight. He likes to fight a rangy fight, but he likes to mix it up and brawl at times. Um, defensively, he's going to get caught, but he's going to always bring a good fight. The thing with Andre is he's just another guy that I'm not sold on yet because he hasn't fought in that. And unfortunately, Billy Joe Saunders ruined that. That's not his fault. You know, it was like when Alexander Povetkin fought Wilder. You know, it was like the same thing with Wilder. We were waiting, we were waiting, and then we finally got that fight, and then it got canceled because of the, 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 the drug test. And we never got to see what would happen in that fight. It's just... I look at it like this, like with Andre, issues with his 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 uh, last promoter, um, you know, the issue with Billy Joe Saunders failing tests, him getting strict, him just not being active. He looks very good, but I want to see him fight somebody better than Vonis Monterosian, you know. And at that time, it was a very good win, just like Jamal Charlo beating J Rock. It was a good win because both of those guys were undefeated and they were top guys at 154. But at 160, we haven't seen anything further than that. So all of these fights, I'm really fine with. You know, I'm really fine with. I wouldn't even say that I'm fine with the Lemieux fight, but if Lemieux was now and like in December, I would have definitely been cool with it. But after we're getting a Rocky Fielding fight, I don't want to go from the Rocky Fielding fight to a Lemieux fight. You know, I want to I want to see someone that's going to really take it to Canelo. That's what I want to see. Um, I hope it's Jamal. I don't think it's going to be Jamal. If not Jamal, I, I would hope that it's Daniel Jacobs. I definitely believe that Daniel Jacobs is the most deserving. If I had to pick someone who I think is actually going to get this fight, my prediction is going to be Daniel Jacobs. I think it's going to be Daniel Jacobs. Um, and I'm not mad at that at all. Um, so anyway, I I just want to give you my thoughts on all of those guys on the list. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, this is just all fan talk here. This is not like, I'm not predicting anything. This is just, who do you guys want Canelo to fight in May. Who do you guys think is going to be Canelo's next opponent? That's what I want to hear from you guys in the comments. Who do you want and who do you think and why? All right. Um, so anyway, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace. Oh, I'll see you guys after this fight Saturday, because I'll definitely be watching this fight Saturday night. All right, peace.